the Lord has given you a good musical talent and uh, up at Tiverton Manor or wherever you go and for uh, our seniors banquet is great. Uh, could have used the same song as we began our Sunday school class that you started with there. He's the God of the mountains, but also of the valleys. And uh, that's it in life. Good times, bad times, he's still the Lord. Um, uh, a couple of other things that just came to mind. Uh, yesterday we uh, watched uh, the funeral for Roy Harrington. Um, most of you won't know Roy, but Roy helped when uh, we were building the addition onto the church and so on, and he and Anita were here with us. So his funeral yesterday. But what came to mind was this. When Roy came to the church, it was just out of nowhere. He just got up one morning. I mean, he had, he had no connection with church, nothing at all. But he got up one morning and he said to his wife, Anita, let's go to church today. <laughs> so of all places, they chose Temple Baptist Church. They walked in. And when the invitation was given, down the aisle to come to receive Christ as Savior. And what a change the Lord made in their lives. But Roy uh, was not often good with words and so on. So uh, we uh, uh, got he and Anita to teach Sunday school. And I remember the first time he was teaching Sunday school and he was so nervous. And this was a big deal to teach Sunday school and these children. And so it was the Christmas time, this time of the year. And so doing the Christmas story, uh, Roy came to me afterwards and he said, he said, I was teaching this morning about the birth of Christ and Christ being laid in the manger and the cattle being there. And one of the uh, students, this is grade two, uh, said to him uh, a question about the cattle. And he said, I was so nervous. Do you know what I said? I said, Aren't we fortunate the cattle didn't eat the baby Jesus? <laughs> he was, yeah, I mean, it just came out and he was so embarrassed afterwards that he would say such a thing or think such a thing. But, oh, we've all gone through that, haven't we? Uh, our Christmas tree. Where is Val? Way back there. Yes. Uh, she and some others. A beautiful Christmas tree, which brings back the old story that at one time, right in front of the sound booth back there, uh, where David is, we'd have the Christmas tree. And so this one year, they had uh, strung it around and around and around and around and around with popcorn. It looked nice. But I remember uh, preaching up here and watching a mouse going around <laughs> circling and eating the popcorn as I was preaching. So I don't see any popcorn on the tree. I think we're safe tonight. Uh, but good memories and good things that have happened in the past. Well, as Pastor Steve said tonight, uh, prophecy. So uh, one verse tonight, uh, Gospel of Matthew, chapter 1, verse 1. And um, this is the connection between the Old Testament and the New Testament and it's in this verse. And Matthew, of course, his theme is the kingdom of God. And he mentions that word approximately 50 times in the Gospel of Matthew. And 32 times, uh, the word that he uses is the kingdom of heaven. So he talks about the kingdom, how to get into the kingdom. His focus is on the Jews. And that's what he does throughout the gospel again and again and again and again. He goes back to Old Testament prophecy because he wants to convince the Jews that Jesus is the Messiah, the sent one from heaven. Leave no doubt about it. One of the interesting things, of course, we, 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 we're not going hardly anywhere tonight concerning the subject of prophecy. But if, if there's one thing that ought to convince people that this is the word of God, every detail that is given is that of prophecy. Uh, 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 pointed out one time, for example, the Quran. There are no prophecies in the Quran. Muhammad didn't write any prophecies. Why? Because he knew he'd be found out. 
that what he had prophesied just didn't come true. But not the word of God. The word of God does not shy away from prophecy after prophecy after prophecy. Next, Stephen next week is going to do for us Bethlehem. Why? Because it was prophesied. There's no name place, a little village like Varney, way out there in nowhere land, that the Messiah must come from there. And uh, we, we could take, uh, I think it was Zach, he used, I believe, Ontario. The example I had used before was that of Texas. And if you covered Texas with silver dollars a foot uh, deep, if you take 11 prophecies concerning the Lord Jesus Christ and begin to multiply the odds, okay, there's uh, maybe 1,000 villages in Judea. So one chance out of 1,000 when Jesus was born, but it must be there, and begin to multiply and multiply, you could cover the state of Texas with silver dollars, take one, color it any color you want, orange or whatever, place it somewhere in all the state of Texas, take an airplane, put a blind man in the airplane, and um, let him jump out of the airplane with a parachute, <laughs> and he comes down and he lands in the state. The chances of him picking one out of there is the same chance of 11 of the prophecies when you multiply them, that, that it could be so. But it is so in the word of God. So prophecy ought to convince anyone that this book is true. So, um, well, let, let's read the first verse. Let's go there first tonight. Because it's connection. The Old Testament book of Malachi ends with a curse. Now, it has hope because it talks of the forerunner who's going to come, but it ends with a curse. The book of the Revelation begins or ends the book with life. Thankful for that. But that's how the Old Testament has ended. So now the connection to the Old Testament is what we've been studying with Abraham. Uh, the book of the generations of Jesus Christ, son of David, son of Abraham. And he goes through the genealogy there. That genealogy, at first, you know, it looks rather boring, but there are several names in there that are very prominent. Um, Matthew's account is, is from uh, a royal perspective. Luke's account of the genealogy that is given is different than Matthew's because it goes through Nathan to David, and that is his legal genealogy. In the Old Testament, there must be two witnesses in order to establish a fact. If you went to court, there must be two witnesses. Matthew and Luke both give witness that he is the Christ, the one sent from heaven. They are the two witnesses. So this is Matthew's witness. Now he goes back to Abraham. And we've just been covering in Abraham, haven't we? How uh, God comes to Abraham. Abraham falls into the deep sleep. And uh, the sacrifices he's laid out. The animals on either side of the pathway. The dead birds. And that was how an agreement was made by men back in those days. I promise all my heart, and if I break this promise, I want to be like these dead animals. I want to be like these dead birds. I promise you, and I'm going to keep the promise. And so it's all set up. But, of course, we saw Abraham fell asleep. God alone, the flaming torch, the flaming lamp, the smoking pot, goes down through the sacrifices. And the promise is established by God alone. There's no if, and, but, nothing. God says, Abraham, the Messiah will come through you. So when Matthew opens here, he says, he uses the name Abraham. And he says, here is the connection. Abraham, this was the promise. Now it has happened. So the Lord Jesus Christ from the house of Abraham must be because God said. Secondly, of course, he uses the name David. 
and must be from the throne of David. Because in David's life, David uh, wants to build a house for the Lord. He says, wow, man, look at my house, beautiful. Where is God's house? It's an old tent. Ah, I know what I do. I'm going to build God a magnificent house. And we'll put uh, all the temple furniture together in the Lord's house. And so uh, David, uh, uh, Nathan the prophet comes in. He tells Nathan the prophet, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to build God a great house. And Nathan the prophet says, right on, David. Amen. Glory to God. Praise God. That's the thing to do. And uh, he turns around. And he walks away. But as he's going back home, remember, God comes to Nathan and says, Nathan, uh, 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 nope. You will go back to David, tell him he cannot build the house. He's a man of war. He shed blood. He'll not build the house. It'll be his son Solomon. And at that point, David determined in his heart, all my wealth, my silver, my gold, my brass, the timber, everything I can, I'm going to store it up for Solomon to build the house. That was his gift to God. Everything he had, he gave to God. Now, you can't outgive God. So um, Nathan comes and he says, David, you're giving all of this. You're a man after God's own heart. For God so loved the world that he gave. So if God is the giver, you can't outgive God. Therefore, he says, the Messiah will come through, the, through, through you, David, into the world. So Matthew here, he wants to tie this back to the Old Testament. That is his purpose, to show the Jewish people, yay, here is the Lord Jesus Christ. Here is the Messiah. Also in this, a different direction tonight. The last book of the Old Testament is Malachi. Malachi, he is prophesying of the forerunner, the day star that shall appear. That will be John the Baptist. Um, but after Malachi, there's approximately 400 years, uh, especially if you take it to the beginning of the ministry of John the Baptist and the ministry of the Lord Jesus Christ, a little over 400 years. During those 400 years, when we leave the Old Testament, Persia is the dominant power. And for about 100 years, they exist as the dominant power. And during that time, they tolerate the Jews, they tolerate the sacrifices at the temple. They just, you know, seem to don't care, and they let it happen. So in Judea, Jerusalem, uh, Ezra, uh, the building of the temple, and so on, uh, the sacrifices take place. But in 333 BC, uh, we have the brass of Daniel's image, Greece. Alexander the Great comes through. And Alexander, when he approaches Jerusalem, he's going to destroy Jerusalem. But the priests, they dress up in their white robes and they come out to meet Alexander, of course unarmed, and they carry with them the scriptures. And they show Alexander from the scriptures, Daniel's prophecy, it's prophesied of the Greek empire to come, you're it. And so his heart is changed and he spares Jerusalem and he stays there for a short period of time. And of course, he goes on from there and he destroys the Persian empire. Alcohol kills him. Alexander the Great dies. He has no son to be heir to the throne. And so four generals divide up the empire. Persia, Syria, Egypt, and Greece. The part that goes to Syria also includes Judea. It was considered as part of the Syrian empire. Well, war goes on between Egypt and Syria. And who's right in the middle of those two? <laughs> it's Judea. They're caught between the anvil and the hammer. And so again, lots of bloodshed, uh, terrible time, but uh, Judea's right in the midst of it. Finally, it is solved because the king of Syria gives his daughter, Cleopatra, to be married to Ptolemy, king of Egypt. 
And you know what the dowry is? Judea. That's the dowry. It goes to Egypt. But it isn't long until the king dies. Things happen with Cleopatra and so on. And so that brings about Antiochus. And Antiochus wants uh, uh, Judea back again. So again, more battles with Egypt. And finally, a man by the name of Antiochus Epiphanes, king of Syria, he wins the battle. And Judea goes back to uh, Syria. Now, Antiochus Epiphanes, uh, again, Daniel's prophecy, he is uh, the one who commits the abomination of desolation in Jerusalem. He takes a sow and slays it on the altar. He puts up an image to Zeus, in, uh, not Zeus, Jupiter in the temple, and he compels all Jews to eat swine meat. It is a dark day in Israel. But God raises up uh, a, a priest by the name of uh, Matthias um, Maccabee. And it begins the Maccabee line. And so he fights against Syria. Syria is, uh, is, is defeated. It, it's, I mean, against all odds, they win. He's slain on the battlefield. Simon and Judas, two of the other brothers, they take up the leadership. And they combine the office of priest and king. The leadership, the rulership of the land together. These boys. So, for a brief time, Judea is, is free of foreign powers. Uh, there's a nephew, John Hyrcanus. And when the Maccabee boys are, are dead, this nephew, John Hyrcanus, he comes, but he has no love for God. Chaos breaks out in the land, revolts in the land, and everybody is against everybody. In 63 AD, Rome comes, Pompey comes, and he takes the land. So 63 years before the birth of Christ. There is struggles with the Parthians or the Persian Empire, and Herod, um, not Herod the Great, Herod who? Herod somebody. Antipas, Herod Antipas, he uh, goes to Rome and uh, asks Rome for help. And so when it's all solved, all said and done, Antipas ha has been set aside and Herod the Great that we know at the birth of Christ, nothing great about him, but Herod the Great, he is the one with authority from Rome. But he's still the puppet of Rome as it acted. Now, I say all that to say this, folks. 400 years, the nation has not heard from heaven. It's blank in history. All of those things were going on. Wars, death, birth, life. But nothing is written. Nothing is heard from the Lord. Uh, Pastor Steve, and as we're singing tonight, one day, same for us. Scriptures is complete. We've been waiting. The Lord has said, oh yes, I'm coming. I'm coming. And that is the blessed hope of the church. And just as sure, just as certain, when the fullness of time was come and Christ was born and scripture is completed and scripture is fulfilled, there we are tonight, folks. We're waiting, watching, there weren't many left in Jerusalem, but there's a young lady by the name of Mary. There is a man by the name of Joseph, expecting and waiting. And here we are tonight, same story. So all the world events, we've been waiting even a longer period of time. It's going to happen. Prophecies of the Lord's return. Okay. I'm finished. <laughs> Peter, <laughs> let's sing. <laughs>